I think there's a lot of confusion about the Eagles defense and what exactly it is that it's doing. I've seen a lot of people call it a soft zone defense and have various complaints about the defense that I don't really think are grounded in reality. So I wanted to get on and kind of go through some of the basics of what the Eagles quarter style defense is trying to accomplish. I had a request on YouTube to break down some of that, uh, specifically the Josiah Scott interception uh, from one of my listeners of the EPA podcast on the BGN radio feed, uh, which by the way, if you're not listening to that, uh, go check that out. You can subscribe to BGN radio. It's the only content that I'm doing right now. That's not on my feed here on YouTube. Uh, but you can go check it out. I talked some about what the Eagles defense is trying to do, and they asked for some film examples. And so I thought I would take a moment and go through some of those this morning. So first of all, let's talk about cover four defense. Maybe you've played Madden before, and and cover four is the thing that you call at the end of the game when you're trying to prevent a Hail Mary because the play art looks something uh, like this, right? You got four rushers, and you got cover four, and you think these guys are all dropping to their zones, and it's just this soft defense. And if that's what was happening, that would be a really soft defense. It'd be a terrible defense that you would almost never want to call. But in reality, that's not is that's not what's happening. And so let's go through it here. So we have uh, a number one receiver. We number our receivers from the inside out. So we've got a number one receiver, a number two receiver. This is the same on both sides of the ball. Uh, but I'll use different colors here. Okay, so there are coverage matching rules here. And let me just write the numbers out here. Okay, so the corresponding colors are responsible uh, if that receiver goes deep. And so our corner at the top of the screen, he is responsible for this number one receiver if he goes vertical. This safety is responsible for the number two receiver if he goes vertical and so on. The field is split in half. Now, what happens if the receiver doesn't go vertical? Well, then you go find work. You go try to find work. And so let's say, uh, let's say that this receiver, let's say he runs a drag. Now, let, let, let's do it this way. Let's say this tight end uh, just releases to the flat and this guy runs a post. Well, in that case this cornerback is responsible for this receiver. He went vertical, but this safety has no responsibility. So is he just going to stand there? Well, no, he looks for work. And so in this case, what he's probably going to do is he's going to step down and help cut off, help bracket this post route. And so it, it helps you prevent deep shots downfield. It helps you prevent explosive plays, but it also, you know, it changes looks for quarterbacks. And so on this particular play, let's look at what happens. The saints are going to run, uh, an inside zone split play action. So we're going to get this tight end blocks across the formation. We're going to fake the handoff and then release to the flat. Now the bottom receiver is going to run like a crossing route and the top receiver is going to run a post route. And then we're going to get a little flat release here from the tight end. And so our two by two quarters rules tell us that this is a vertical route from number one, right? And so it's going to be matched by this guy. And so at the snap of the ball, you'll see he's going to step to that route. We've got the same thing on the bottom. This is a vertical route. This corner is going to step to it. And so let's watch it right now, only looking at the wide receivers and the cornerbacks at the snap of the ball. And so you'll see step to the receivers, and we're matching them in man coverage. Now, let's go back and let's watch what the safeties do. Because remember, the safeties, their guys don't go vertical. And so what is going to happen is you're going to see, as this guy comes across the field, this safety is going to identify this route, and he's going to step to it. He's going to help cover it. And the same thing is going to happen for the post route. right? The post route is going to come over, and you're going to see this safety step to this route. And so you essentially get a double team on both of these. So we see the safeties keying to it. They step to it. Where is the quarterback going to go with this ball? This is a shot play. You've tried to set up some deep pass to get a chance one-on-one -on -one to push the ball downfield, and it's covered up, and it results in a sack. And so this is an example of quarters working really well uh, to do what it was designed to, and the Eagles get a sack. Now, let's talk about what happens when it's not a two-by-two -two formation, when it's not a balance formation. This is a three-by-one formation. You can see we've got three receiving threats to this side of the field, 
and we've only got one to this side of the field. And so now your coverage rules change. Uh, so I'll draw it out here. We've got our corners responsible for number one if he goes vertical. Our safety is responsible for number two if he goes vertical. Who is responsible for number three if he goes vertical? You might think it's the slot corner, and there is a check called palms check where you would have him responsible for it, but on this one, this safety is responsible if number three goes vertical. And then on the other side, uh, there's different ways you can play this out. One would be a technique called Meg, uh, man everywhere he goes, where you just man up this backside. Uh, you'll do that a lot. That's not what happens on this play. Uh, in fact, on this play, this top receiver is just going to run a drag and you're going to see this quarter flat step to it. So, But let's look at, uh, here, here's what the Saints run. On the back side, it's just going to be a drag and a little check down route. And you'll see this guy looks for work. He steps to the check down. The quarter flat is going to take the drag. But that's not really what I want to look at uh, on this play. We want to look at the top of the play. At the top of the play, we're going to see a vertical route. We're going to see a dig route or a deep end. And we're going to see a vertical route. And so all of these are going to be vertical routes. And so you're going to see, as I drew out a second ago, you're going to see each of these guys step to their vertical route. One key on this play is going to be your slot corner rerouting this receiver. You want to push him outside, make contact, push him to the sideline uh, because it gives your safety more time to come down on this. And so if we snap the ball here, just watch. So we get, we get the reroute right here that we just talked about. We're pushing him outside. Uh, our middle linebacker, our middle of field zone, is also stepping to this side. He's rerouting to the outside to give the safety time to get over. And you see that everyone picks up their guys, right? And boom, nobody's open. There's a sack. And so that's exactly what we want to do. That's exactly why we run quarters. We want to confuse things. So why do before we get to the last play, what is the advantage of quarters? Why, why would we want to run something like this? There's several reasons. Um, zone match takes the best portions of man coverage. What, what is the best, or excuse me, zone match takes the best things about zone coverage. You think about zone coverage, what's great about it? You've got vision on the quarterback. You've got guys looking at him, reading his eyes, reacting to the play. Uh, you're able to break on throws. As soon as the quarterback starts his throwing motion, because we have eyes on him, we can break on the quarterback, and, and we can go make a play on the ball. And so some of those key things, the best things about zone coverage, you get that in zone match because of the leverage you start with, off, off the ball, eyes on the quarterback, but you use man-to-man -man coverage principles to actually cover guys and create tighter windows to throw in. And so it's sort of the best of both worlds in that respect. It's also really cool. None of these videos, none of these plays I'm going to show right now, but you can split the field in half and you can run different things on each side. You might have heard of uh, cover six or cover eight or cover nine, uh, different uh, quarter, quarter, half. On one half of the field, you can play it out like cover two. On the other half, you can play quarters. And you can do so many different things to confuse quarterbacks, to confuse uh, receivers. Uh, so it allows you to do that. And then you can be as good as your communication rules allow you to be. As, as good as your communication is, as good as your rules are, that's how good your defense can be because you can really handle anything the offense throws at you. You can have breakdowns from that, and we've seen some of those, but generally the Eagles do a good job with their rules. And then you can be as versatile as your rules are. It, does the opponent have a really good wide receiver one in the slot? You can bracket that receiver, and then you can run your coverage behind it without just totally killing the coverage like it would if you were in man where you just have straight two guys assigned to that. So there's a lot of versatility. The, the adjustments that you can make are endless. And these adjustments do get made in game by the Eagles, but it's really hard to see, especially if you don't understand the basics. And there's so many more rules that I'm going to get into in this video. Uh, they're endless. But the two basics are how to handle two by two uh, and how to handle trips. So now let's look at this last play. This is the Josiah Scott interception. It's the very next play after this sack. And again, we're in a three by one. Okay, now at the top, we're going to run a dig route. And you'll notice that our number one here, this is number one. He's going to be responsible for that. Okay, uh, we're going to, the running back is going to sort of run like he's going to fake a check down and then go on a streak. That is this guy's responsibility. This is our quarter flat. Okay. He is responsible for the first route to the flat. 
because this is trips, he knows if number one, if any, if somebody out of the backfield goes vertical, he has to take it because there's a good chance number one won't be there. Okay, so he's going to convert into man coverage on there. Now the play side, the trip side, is where we really want to look at. Okay, but first let's just watch this first part that I just showed you play out, and so we can see the snap of the ball. See number one converts to man coverage. Our linebacker, now our linebacker's beat, right? He bit on the check down. If we're looking to this side, this could be bad. This could be a touchdown, but we're not looking to that side. And why are we not looking to that side? It's because we have a cover four beater dialed up to the bottom of the screen. This is the this is the touchdown play, right? This is the play you call to beat cover four. When you know your opponent is in it, this is the play you want to go to. They're going to run a scissors concept. And so a scissors concept, we have our routes crossing each other like this. Now, why is this so good against quarters? Well, it's so good against quarters because, remember, this guy is responsible for the outside receiver. He's responsible for the inside receiver. And now you're making them cross each other. And that's so hard for this corner and this safety to do. And so they call up this concept. Now, you've also got just at the bottom of the screen, you've just got kind of a chip and release into the flat. And so what you're going to see here, remember, this guy is responsible for number three. If he goes vertical, obviously he's not going to. So let's see what happens here. We snap the ball. Notice Josiah Scott in the slot. He's rerouting this wide receiver. He's pushing him to the outside, right? It gives the safety more time. Now, we know he wants to actually run this outbreaking route, so he wants outside anyways, but he's rerouting the receiver. Notice the eyes of our number three, of our safety here, our weak side safety, are to his guy, number three here. If he goes vertical, he's got to step to this. So we get the reroute that we want. Uh, it disrupts timing. Now watch. We pass him off to the safety. The safety is stepping down to this route. Uh, this corner is turning to run with his guy, so the safety stepping down. Now Josiah Scott turns. Where are his eyes? Right on the quarterback. This guy is his responsibility in the flat now because he didn't release vertically. Right? If he goes vertical, the backside safety has him. Since he doesn't, the backside safety is looking for work. He can step to this guy. He can step here. He can play a cover one zone in the middle of the field. He can do whatever he wants. He can freelance, which is what makes this coverage so versatile and so hard for a quarterback to read out. You want to call man coverage, you find an advantageous matchup and you just throw at it. You can determine that before the snap, but so many things are changing here and the quarterback has to read that all. And so Josiah Scott does a great job of rerouting, passing him off, and now turning and getting vision on the quarterback. He is responsible for this guy if the ball comes out here, but you can rally and tackle. This is just at the line of scrimmage. It's 15 yards to the first down, right? But watch what he does. Vision on the quarterback, and now he does almost trip, but he feels this out, and he's able to retreat and get the interception. So this was his own coverage, zone matching coverage, a quarter's coverage, and he's able to go get that interception. So I hope this helps a little bit, kind of explain what the Eagles are trying to do in coverage, what the heck is cover for. Uh, like I said, there's so many uh, different checks and rules and things, but the two most common things you can look for, and it's hard to see on broadcast copy, but if you've got all 22 or you see uh, zoomed out replays on broadcast is two by two sets. Remember, number one, number two, number from the outside in on both your receivers and your corners, safeties. If they go vertical, you have to take them. Otherwise, you look for work. And then in trips, three by one, just remember you number outside in. Corner's got one, safety's got two. Weak side safety has three, and most often we're going to man with that backside corner. So those reroutes are key. So many rules, but I hope that helps you guys kind of get a little bit of an understanding. Uh, I do have some more content like this, Football 101 content, on my YouTube, breaking down different coverages, cover three, cover two, uh, what their strengths and weaknesses are, how you attack them, exploit them, those sorts of things. Gap versus power runs, or gap versus zone runs. Uh, you guys can go check all that content out too. But I hope this is helpful. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you have any questions.